All right, good afternoon. Welcome to National Distance Learning Week. This is day four, and we are excited to host two presentations this afternoon. This first one here um, at noon, you'll see on the slide, is about lessons learned using Lumen. It is the good, the bad, and everything in between of online homework systems. So um, I'm Erin Maney, if I haven't met you, Manager of Communications and Community Engagement at SUNY Online. It's my pleasure to introduce Mark and Jeff. Um, Mark is a lecturer and coordinator in the Civil Engineering Technology Department at SUNY Polytechnic Institute, and Jeff is a professor and coordinator in Mechanical Engineering Technology at Mohawk, Mohawk Valley Community College. So welcome to you both. I look forward to um, your impressions of online homework. Hey, well, Aaron, thank you for having us this week, and it's good to be here. We were here last year to talk about uh what we came up with in lumen now now um just as a disclaimer as jeff and i get started uh neither of us is like paid to do any of this so like we're we don't we're not we don't compensation from like a online homework system or lumen or any of the others out there so we're just throwing that out there but last year we were able to jump in here and talk about lumen and it can go wherever you want to code it so jeff and i took lumen which has traditionally been used for more math-based systems uh, and and um, we took it and we, we applied it to engineering technology where some of the technology and some of the online homework systems were, were really designed more for um, engineering science. So we we took that, we coded it, and a year later, we, we, we've we been talking back and forth. And, and it's kind of like, you know, what's what's good, what's bad, and where, where's everything in between? So we chose Lumen. Uh, initially, because it was customizable, we could we could put it, you know, we could do what we wanted to in in it, right? We could we could turn it into not just a prepackaged system that doesn't really address the learning outcomes, the specific learning outcomes of our of our program, especially in engineering technology, where things are not quite the same as engineering science. They're a little bit um, more algebra based, a little bit more applied, but we were able to use Lumen um, because we could do pretty complex things in it, right? We could still scaffold our problems and ultimately we were looking for uh, student success. So we had, we had identified some advantages last uh, cycle, um, but, but some of the things that we were really looking for was the ability to break down problems. Um, so especially in engineering where we have multi-step pieces, right? We don't wanna restart the whole thing with new numbers every time. So when you have to come up with you know one structure and now we're looking at multiple um, sets of numbers in there. Uh, Lumen has the multi-part feature, which we really we really uh, appreciated for the scaffolding aspect of it. We really appreciated the the unique random number generation. So each student will get a slightly different problem, uh, but it's not going to be the exact same problem. So now the collaboration becomes more true collaboration where students are working together. Um, but also we 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 enjoyed the we we liked the aspect of the immediate feedback, and we were encouraged by that with, with Lumen. So that's where we went with it. Um, and now that is an advantage of, of an online homework system. We're gonna talk about these and this is why we selected this initially. But here's just an example of those random uh, variables where uh, we have some um, we have some you know numbers here that change from student to student, right? And that's that's a good thing. So that's something that we we identified that we liked. We, we jumped in with it again. Um, this was in our in last year, but the the, the thing that we found students really appreciated, was the idea that they could get intermediate and immediate feedback, both, right? So the intermediate feedback is nice because when you have a problem like um, the one on the screen and you have, I think this one literally has 14 different places for answers, right? You can get each step along the way to kind of drill down and nail down uh, where you're making mistakes. So again, a, a good a good thing about Lumen and why we initially selected um, a lumen, lumen to use. Now, one of the things like looking back on this is we're trying to figure out, well, is this, you know, I, I mean, actually looking back when we were when we were first evaluating whether or not we wanted to use this, um, we we kind of felt like this is a good idea, you know, and um, granted academia, academia is a little less like about feely, touchy feely, like, hey, like we feel like this is a good idea, but um, what does the actual research say? What does the literature say? And Jeff and I, uh, we, we looked at some of the different literature, but also um, Megalese at all put together a systematic literature review um, a few years ago. And this is one of the outcomes. There's a consensus that online homework contributes to more students' uh, performance and favors more students' engagement than traditional homework. So traditional homework being pen and paper, you write down your answers, the teacher grades it and gives you feedback, right? So there's this consensus among the literature that 
uh, or among the studies that have been published, that this is a good thing. The online system creates, you know, it, it enhances student performance and it, it and it, it brings more engagement to students. Now, um, if you are on this call and we're going to try to um, do some some engagement here, but if you've had experience with uh, any uh, online systems and want to maybe put that in the chat or um, have seen similar things or pros and cons, definitely feel free to, to keep the discussion going and uh, we'll try to engage with that as well because uh, only one of us can talk and, and you know Jeff can can answer that or I can answer it and, and as well. So if you've seen similar things, let us know. Um, but this is this is a good thing, right? So this year, what we wanted to do is Jeff and I have been talking throughout the year, like what's gone well, what's gone bad, you know, poorly. And, and really what we, we wanted to say, well, did we deliver successful results, right? And did we hit with failure? What things, or well, I'm sorry, did we hit with success? What things were success? But also not just to sugarcoat things, what things did we meet with, with failure, right? So this is where there's the good, the bad, kind of the in-between. And um, as Jeff's finding out, one of the one of the bads that we didn't stick in there, but uh, online homework systems are dependent on power. So I, I know at, at Jeff's campus where he is at right now, they they have a power failure. So he's on battery power. So hopefully uh, Jeff can, can, can maintain that. But that didn't make it into the slides. I, I guess we should have uh, thought about that one. So just looking at kind of, you know, the past year, where was it good, where was it bad, what happened um, in between? The, the first thing that Jeff and I both kind of had to point out was um, there's there's this idea that, the you know, you can use this online homework system and it's great, it automates everything, but there's a lot of work that goes into it, especially if you're customizing a program. And, and this is where I think we, Jeff and I, have enough technical knowledge. We're both professional licensed engineers. I'm um, in New York State. We have a background in engineering, but we're not computer scientists. And actually, Jeff and I, we were having this conversation the other day uh, just with with a student that was a computer science student. And uh, Jeff, I think you said something along the lines of it really helps to have computer science and, right? And especially in this digital age, it's like this idea that like everything's going um, with with AI and with the coding piece of it. You know, maybe AI is going to replace the need for computer scientists, but I doubt it. I, I imagine it'll heighten the need for it. But th this idea where Jeff and I, we were trained in this traditional knowledge of, of engineering or engineering you know, technology, and, but, but having, the, the, having to pick up the coding piece of it was a big lift. So that's, you know, not for the faint of heart. It's not for your, your, casual, uh, your casual person that does, doesn't want to code. So at, at a minimum, right, at a minimum, um, there's this idea that you need to customize a publisher's package for your particular course to, to address your particular learning objective. So that's, I'm going to put that in the negative category where it's it takes that upfront work to build it. Now, in theory, once you build it, everything's perfect and it works. It's, there's there's more to it than that. Um, one of the things that we ran into, or at least, I, Jeff, I think we had conversations about this as well, but just trying to get it incorporated into Lumen is, is or I'm sorry, into our learning management. We can try and get our Lumen system incorporated into our learning management system. Um, let me just let me do allow you a, a moment to breathe. Uh, that if the just you, you said it's not for the faint of heart or the uh, or the casual programmer, and I'm about as casual as it gets. And um, I was able to learn it, pick it up, and I I actually did use Chat GPT to help me out. In fact, I was using it today. Um, it was kind of interesting because Mark uh, put in a whole bunch of information from the, some some reference tables and he did a great job doing it. And I said, that looks like a lot of work. So I took his example of how to did I do it. I fed it into chat GPT. I literally took an image of a data table and I said, make this data table look like Mark's code. And it did. So <laughs> in a whole lot faster than, than you, because he was putting it into spreadsheets or whatever it was. It was pretty, pretty I just said, boy, that's too much work. So I was able to do some of that. Then onto this uh, slide here. I'm going to tell you that, yeah, it was, in, the integration was a pain because there's no one, there's very little documentation. That's the other, that's one of the biggest things about the, about the coding. There's like no documentation practically. You know, if you wanted to learn Python or something like that, there's a million different places that would teach you how to use Python. There's nowhere that will teach you how to use um, the MyOpenMath coding language. Nowhere. Uh, so 
Um, they do have one good reference sheet, very long, and that's it. Nothing else will help you do that. Um, same thing with this, uh, putting it into uh, external learning tools uh, is going to be, uh, it, it was a pain, but now that I know how to do it, it's, it's a few clicks, but it, there was not, there's no, there's no documentation on it. I had to figure it out myself. Well, for my part, I did, I think I might've put a ticket in with Lumen and they were on the call, on the, the Zoom call with me within a day or so and, and helped help me to navigate some of the pieces that I was having issues with. So uh, to Lumen's credit, they, they were able to help navigate some of this. They have a couple guide documents, but yeah, it, it's, this is where, unless you have um, instructional technology people on your campus, it's, you know, it's, it's, it, whether it's Lumen or it's a, you know, a Pearson product or it's a McGraw Hill product, they're, they're all going to need to get incorporated into LMS unless you do it outside the LMS, right? So that's a step. And um, for us, that was a step that I'm going to call a negative, right? This is kind of one of those things that just takes extra, extra time. So is it, is it, is it insurmountable? No. Um, so, so maybe the casual coder, Jeff, maybe we are casual coders, mm -hmm. uh, but, but uh, you raise a great point with, um, you know, there are resources like chat GPT that can help and, and push this in the right direction. So good, bad. Um, it's just a lesson learned. So one of the things that Jeff and I, um, or at least that I experienced was, was the idea that students are familiar with online homework systems, right? The, ever since probably high school, they were using Khan Academy, right? So they know, they kind of expect to, to be able to put numbers in, get answers out. Khan Academy is honestly pretty far developed in terms of having solutions, having kind of even some hints. So, well, if you got this one wrong, that means you're probably doing this part wrong. But for us, it's harder to code all that stuff in just being being two of us, right? Unless it's a, you know, a, a publisher's website. And, and there are um, absolutely publishers out there that, that do some things. But if you're trying to customize it, 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 it's a bigger lift, right? So this is a good thing, though, that students were familiar with, with how to enter, um, you know, answers in, uh, whether it was, it was Khan Academy or, you know, the, this is McGraw Hill's smart book or um, I know Pearson has some work, you know, out there. You know, Google Classroom, that students yeah. got used to all that stuff during the pandemic. So, yeah. So, so, I mean, obviously the, the system that we're, we, we adapted or adopted was, uh, was, was Lumen. And, and honestly, I, I, I found a lot of my students had used it previously with their math courses. So, um, definitely familiarity to it. Uh, I, I found it to be, um, to work well in that system, but there was this familiar, familiarity, which is good. Um, pushing past that though, um, another, another thing that Jeff and I, I think appreciated was, it was all our time that we invested in, in some of this coding. Um, it did, I, Jeff, I would say I spent less time grading numbers over the past year. And I, I, I think you could probably agree with that, but, um, rather than just like picking up numbers and be like, Hey, this number's right or this number's wrong. And now we could kind of try to dive into a little bit more of the, the reasons why. Right. So I think if, if we can do that, that's going to be helpful. And we'll talk more about that later of, of how to do that. Uh, but that was one thing that um, that that I appreciated is 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 also um, less time just manually grading numbers. Except for when there were rounding errors. Jeff, I don't know how much you ran into rounding errors. I know we had some of them, but this is an example here where a student entered 0.95. And it, it falls outside the typical or the, the I think, the default tolerance that is coded into Lumen of, you know, but 0.955 would have been an acceptable answer. But you can see the the, the answer to, uh, I don't know, any significant digits that Lumen reports it in. But this I, I did run into, into some issues with that, but I was able to uh, modify the code well enough and also structure the code well enough in different ways so that. I didn't run into it as much. So I think a lot of it was a, there's a certain learning curve on how to structure it uh, to make it work. Um, but honestly, that's the kind of stuff that drives students nuts. You know, that that's the real, you know, like I can, if they're off by a factor of 30, that's one thing. If they're off by 1.1% because your tolerance is 1%, that drives them nuts. It does. And I guess from, from my standpoint, I can say, Hey, like I, I, I wrote all this, I, I coded it and you didn't have to pay 90 bucks for it. And then they get a little bit of a smile on their face. So, you know, from, from that standpoint, I think they, they appreciate that I can go in and fix it. 
uh, as opposed to some, you know, somebody else's system out there that, well, I don't know, that's just the way they did it. It, it. You know, it shifts the blame, but it's it's not really an acceptable answer either. So that was one of the things that is a negative in, in, unless you can, you know, put the extra effort to code it in there. Um, Jeff, this is this is a, an image you brought in, but uh, one of the things when students would ask me for help, they'd get it wrong a time or two in, in Lumen or in the system. I'd say, well, well, show me your work, right? So show me your work. So is this an email that you got with, with something or did you put this together? Um, I use a uh, Discord a lot with my students uh, to ask quick questions and they can work together on homework and stuff like that. So this is actually from one of my better students who actually does his homework. But if you'll see it in, in um, the upper left thing was the uh, the the question and you know the fact that he got a couple things wrong in the upper right is uh, his homework, the, the, his actual work that he did in the lower left and the lower right are references from the uh, from the textbook or from some of the online resources saying, hey, uh, I used these things and I didn't get the right answer or something like that. And so we were able to have a very good common discussion about what was what and why. And, and uh, so that was really good. Um, so again, this is what the students can do um, and and what I require them to do. Because I tell them, listen, if you go to the doctor and and you say, I'm in pain, and the doctor says, where? And you say, you figure it out. Like that doesn't help. If you're asking me for help, I need to know, you know, all the details. And usually they're just pushing it, buttons on their calculator. Jeff, I, I like your analogy. I'm going to start using that one. But but yeah, I, I put this as a negative just because it felt like there was a lot of effort on our part and on my part to to get students to get to this level. I mean, that's that's what you have up here is a, is a good students, you know, actual question. Um, but I I. I found my my on my my students would typically give me something like this um which you can if if you're if you're into engineering and and you can sort of start to pull out and interpret but it's scattered i mean we we, we lost the the grid lines here there's no there, you, you lost kind of horizontal and vertical um and it's just it's kind of all over the place but but one of the problems that uh, i think we found and and even like my son who's taken some online courses not in engineering but just um he he had to do some of the smart work kind of stuff and he said he he'd ask me questions <laughs> i'd say the same thing to him so where's your work he's like well i did it in the calculator like okay let's let's take a step back and um you realize you have to write down everything you know um but but students again it's it's this is a challenge to, is to especially when you push it to online and if that hand calculation goes away, it doesn't matter how well you've modeled it in class. Um, it, I, I actually will give them worksheets and we'll write it out exactly, you know, kind of the way that I want them to do it and, and give them sample after sample after sample in the right format. But somehow that that's that's difficult to translate for them into the, uh, you know, especially when the online system doesn't require it. So that that brings up this idea that the, the hand calculations were often minimal or non-existent, and this is by generic student. Um, if I can do the problem on my calculator, why do I need to show the work? Well, this is a problem, right? But the I reason that... I tell them they need to show their work, and I don't know, Jeff, you can come to this too, but is because that's the way it's done in industry. You're expected to document things on actual engineering paper right. and, and document right. your work. I, I think the problem is, is that when they are in high school, the problems are so simple and the teachers focus so much on the calculator uh, that they are they are never forced to, never encouraged to document it well. And uh, so that's, I think that's a huge part of it, you know, where they come from uh, and the level of difficulty that they came from. And now they've got to learn a whole new, to them, a whole new way of doing things. Yeah, I mean, we're actually expecting them to, and training them to become engineers someday, right? So so in, I know, Jeff, I know you and I both have consulted outside of SUNY, and this, our clients expect hand calculations at times where we actually write things out and write them in a neat, legible format because it's ex it's expected in the sense that, um, you know, if this project ever had a problem, 
you know, God forbid it, it got litigated or, or something along those lines, we'd have to turn over this design report, right? So this is, I'm trying to instill that into the students, but, but somehow um, I think when it went online, they, they didn't see that value as much. And we can, we can push it all that we want to in, in class and tell them all that we want to in class and model it. Um, but I think there needs to be something in terms of, of requiring it. So that was one of the lessons I think that we learned in implementing an online homework system. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how to do that or what that does. Um, one of the things that I think we learned as well is while we get answers here that are marked as right or wrong, right? So these are marked right or wrong. Um, in you know the online you know feedback system, we can give we can change the points, we can give partial credit, we can even click add feedback, but it's not very useful without seeing the actual hand calculations. It's like, well, you got this one wrong. You probably did this, you know. So we can give hints and generic solutions, but without um, more specific information from the students, it's going to be difficult to give detailed feedback. So that was one of the things that we found um, a, a challenge um, in, in kind of along those lines. Typically, when I'm giving partial credit, like on a test or something along those lines, the answer is only one little small piece of that pie, right? We, I want to know, do you know the right equation to use? Did you set up a diagram that shows all the variables and the parameters and the dimensions and the you know directions of forces and those sorts of things? And then did you show that your solution, your substitution correctly? And then just that little piece is, is just is, is the actual answer. Whereas in, in the online system, the whole pie is taken up just by the answer, right? And, and Dr. Holtz, one of the one of the guys that kind of mentored me when I first started here uh, in teaching, the important thing is the solution process. That's what I grade, right? That's what he kind of instilled into me as well. And the online system kind of gets away from that uh, a little bit. So that's, I would say, is a negative. Um, but again, with those diagrams, again, here's another diagram. And this is actually from a, a decent student, but, and he can, he can get away with not drawing perfect diagrams. But even in the diagram I, I asked him to submit at one point, um, he was missing some force arrows. He's, he's, he has like a, a, a partial diagram here. He doesn't show all his equations. So this is something that, um, again, unless they're forced to do, they're not going to do. But, uh, but one of the things that I found too is just, the, the difficulty of giving specific feedback um, to help them change, right? So, so learning isn't doing everything perfectly the first time, right? Learning is kind of this idea that you have to take it, but also um, learn from your mistake to get better, right? So um, that was just the ability to, to give specific feedback on diagrams I found to be a challenge. So kind of in summary here, right, the, there's, there's the, Great things with unique numbers, right? So this allows for student collaboration without direct cheating, right? They're not, they're now they're working together to, to talk about concepts and principles and approaches to problems as opposed to just copying uh, numbers. And you'll notice unique numbers is is, is on the con side as well. Uh, I threw that over there just because when you're starting to uh, try to evaluate student work or, or give feedback on student work, uh, it's now you have to look at specific problems. So, so it's good and it's bad. Um, we really like the idea of the unlimited attempts, uh, the scaffolded problems, the immediate feedback, right? That goes into, um, again, minimal instructor grading time, uh, but also student, student familiarity. They're, they're familiar, they're familiar with the online systems. Uh, obviously, we, we mentioned this time intensive coding to get it set up. And even if you're not coding, that could be just gathering the problems that you want for your specific course and your specific uh, learning objectives. Um, the elements and integration can be an, an issue. Uh, the, and then these kind of all are, are a little bit lumped together, but the work only in the calculator, the poor hand calcs, um, the less robust feedback and a, a grade based on an answer, but not a solution process. So these are some of those things that we came up with as pros and cons. Um, they're not insurmountable. I think if we you know, go back uh, to um, earlier in the presentation, I think there's still that consensus that this online system does have benefits, right? It does enhance student performance and it does um, enhance uh, engagement. However, it's not the be all, be all and end all, right? So there's good and there's bad. And I think that's one of the things that we both took away as we've been talking about this over the past year. And the question that we really kind of have been wrestling with is, is this, how do we get the benefits of an online homework system and a traditional homework system, right? Um, so how do we get how do we how do we get both and right? So so this is one one of the things that um, 
that I even going back to that the the literature review that we had looked at. Uh, one, I think this was the last the last line in that literature review. But the last line in the re literature review, I think, um, basically said said this. I think it was the idea that results let us to reflect that a hybrid approach, right, a hybrid approach. Um, adjusted for the types of exercises and questions may be beneficial for students. So this is one of those things where it got us thinking in the, in the sense that it's not just one or the other. How can we do both? Um, so this year, one of the courses I did, I actually adopted an, or adapted another course uh, into Lumen. And one of the things that I did is I, I, said, I said, let's do both, right? I, let's do a Lumen assignment that'll check numbers. And that's what I tell my students is the Lumen assignment is going to check the numbers but I still want you to do hand calcs just like we're doing them in class. And I'm gonna give you a grade based on the, your solution process, based on your diagrams, based on the hand calcs, based on the completeness, the correctness, the clarity, and all those things. So eh, my wife, I think, um, said, but wait, 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 you just did all this work to develop an online homework system, and now you're gonna spend time grading everything as well. Well, yeah. <laughs> So, so there is a little bit of work there, but honestly, grading a solution process is a lot easier than like manually checking individual numbers. So, uh, let's the, the, one of the things that I did to to make that easier was I I came up with a rubric where the students kind of know what this rubric is. It, it's this is uh, I'll I'll dive into this in a little bit here, but um, it, it standardizes expectations and helps them to um, to see where maybe they've gone wrong or or, or but it also speeds up. The grading a little bit, um, standardizes the grading, and and I was able to implement this in Brightspace in the LMS, um, so they would be forced to be forced. They would be required to submit their hand calculations so that I could see them. Right. So um, the first thing I would look at is completeness. Right. Did you include all the problems? Are you missing major components? Right. That's that's pretty straightforward. The other thing that I like about the rubrics in in Brightspace is that there's a little feedback button. So if you know they're missing problem, they're they're missing problem five. I can say missing problem five. I can just type that in pretty quickly without too much too much trouble. But this is a, a quick way to identify. Um, also in Brightspace, I can use a stylus if I'd like to, you know, to to mark up certain areas, and I've I've done that as well. Uh, the clarity. This is FBD is a free body diagram. So in our engineering world, we need we need free body diagrams all the time. And if you're not familiar with the free body diagram, that's okay. But just think of a diagram, you know, uh, and, and, but also are those equations easy to follow? So this is, this is just one of those things where there's different levels of grading here uh, that allow us to, you know, quickly look at that. And then there's all the little things, right? Uh, did you include a name on your paper? Did you use engineering paper? Did you include your problem statements? Um, just those little things that take it from just numbers on a page to actually looking like a professional uh, document. Uh, lastly, what I did was I, I made a a, uh, or a a line for just overall, right? Is this this is just a general adjustment? Um, is it consistent with excellent work performed in the industry? Because that's what we're that's one of the things that's a really selling point of engineering technology is trying to prepare our students for the industry, right? So this gives us the ability to, or at least it gave me the ability uh, to, to, to kind of have the best of both worlds. We're now, I'm, I'm, I'm allowing the system to give it that immediate feedback with different numbers, but now I'm also requiring students to perform calculations in a way that's consistent with industry. And, and to go through this grading process is actually not a huge, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's a lot less time intensive than um, than grading when I had to grade the whole uh, assignment um, and, and had to check all the numbers as well. So here's just an example where, you know, I, I could circle a diagram, I could tell the student to finish this work, I could say there's missing work on this one, or this it's incomplete for this, I can't remember if this is the question four or five, but it's just a, a quick way to check a box, tell them what they're missing, maybe circle or highlight and go from there. Because ultimately, we we're we're in this process, and I think Jeff and I will will continue to have this problem where we try to perfect everything, and 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 um, we never quite arrive, right? Because we have other ideas. We can we we were talking about even this morning about alternate assessments, um, lab based design projects, kind of some open ended real world projects. How do you how do you fit those in? Because those are kind of outside of an online system. Or how do you do more? Maybe you pair the online with some more frequent in in person homework style quizzes or, or tests or assessment and that sort of thing. But I, I think the big picture that we're trying to keep coming back to is we have a learning outcome and we're trying to, to, to address that. 
we present some learning and teaching activities. We have some sort of assessment. In this case, the online system is part of that assessment, but it's not the entire assessment, right? And I think that's where we're coming up with, you know, when we first, I think, set out on the online homework, let's develop our own system and it's going to be perfect. The, the past years kind of taught us a little bit that it's not perfect, right? This, this hybrid blend, um, this approach may actually um, give us a little bit more. So Jeff, I don't know if you want to jump in with other other ideas that you've come up with over this past year. I know we've had a lot of discussions, but. Um... Um, yeah, I, I'm glad that you're still breathing because I think that was one really yeah, <laughs> long presentation by you. Thank you so much, Mark, because uh, for taking the lead on this. Um, but uh, even while you're uh, you were talking, I literally had students asking me questions on Discord uh, about this and um, and uh, they, they were off by a factor of four because they were off by a factor of four, you know. Um, and uh, I, I think what I was telling Mark earlier today was I want to go back and try to get a better idea of what types of questions are optimal for what types of outcomes so um so you know if they don't have to set a whole lot up in a problem and it's not very complex you know make it the uh um make it a uh an online problem because they're just going to throw it into the calculator anyway okay for you know stress equals force over area boom go okay nice and easy but these one of the great things we liked about this lumen system was that it was scaffolded so you could could do complex stuff so if you can break it down into those those little bits it can be helpful uh you, you can still do those complex things but then the students they try to do it, it i think that was one of the good things about scaffolding is that um instead of trying to throw it into their calculator that can do like 50 different things they do it bit by bit by bit by bit um and so i think that you know if you structure it well you, that can help out but even then sometimes the very end is like it, if it's like a deflection problem for a beam and you've got this monstrous uh formula to work with um it's it's really not uh um it can really get in the in the way when they're trying to just throw it all in the um, in the calculator. So um, also I've, I've created some design problems, which are, you know, which are nice and helpful, but they, um, uh, or they, they could be really cool. But even though, because it's design, students start saying, what, wait, what, what I'm supposed to pick something. It's like, yes, I have a program that you can pick from this list of 10 things. And they still are, you know, their, their minds are still blown so it's, um, I think there's still going to be, like you said, a lot of playing. Um, one more thing, though, is that what I want is I want, um, say I've got 20 students and, I, and I'm and i looking at all of their homeworks and uh, I'm, you know, I say, oh, well, you're missing this formula. I might miss it. One of these days, I'm hoping to have an artificial intelligence that can that I'm training, I'm looking at the screen and I'm telling it, literally having a conversation saying, I'm looking for this, 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 and this. And it might actually find those formulas that that student threw, you know, threw in some corner somewhere that I miss. So um, I'm one of the things, uh, a slide I would have thrown on here is uh, getting to the point where um, the homework submission is on a screen, very clearly you know, shown and that so that the uh, um, so that some future AI can be trained to read it and then I can retire. Yeah, I think the the, the challenge is going to be um, the students will have access to that same system to some level, right? It, it won't be trained by you, Jeff, but it, I think the students will have access <laughs> to in language models or artificial intelligence models that will will tell them will analyze their homework as well and i don't think that's necessarily a bad part but i think we need to again it comes back to training the students how to interpret that data right 
it, and that's a huge thing. It's the, I, I, one of the things that I've been doing in my classes, especially this year, is I'll pull up a model and I'll, I'll model a problem that we just did and I'll intentionally do something to get the, the wrong answer. Hmm. And then I say, well, wait a minute. I thought the computer was always right, you know, and, and but it forces them to think like the, the, the computer to sometimes and even AI, as great as it is, um, often has has problems. Right. So yeah. you need to have enough of the knowledge and skill to be able to take these basic calculations and understand what the output is. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops. Hey, thanks, Mark. I've got to run off to class now because they're probably going to say, oh, no power. So we don't have class like, oh, no, I've got markers. This is good, Jeff. Well, thanks for uh, joining in. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the, the discussions over the past couple of years. Yep. Yeah, likewise. Take care. Bye, Aaron and everyone Thank you, else. Jeff. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jeff. And thanks, Mark, also. I was really interested to hear your perspectives from the approach that you use it knowing from last year how you have custom coded, you know, the software to do things that you would like it to do. So it's kind of a nice little, uh, almost like a part two, like a now here's, you know, looking back, here's, here's what we like and don't like and wish we wish we could do and, um, and future thinking. And I, I like what Jeff said about aligning the, um, you know, the type of questions use that you're using for the desired outcome for the students. And, you know, do you want them to just get to a numeric answer or do you want them to be able to show and explain something about the process, which is a different, you know, type of, of, of thought process and learning? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, sometimes online learning can turn into, uh, let's just do 15 discussion boards and, you know, yeah. it's like, but discussion board doesn't fit for this, for what we're doing, right? So it's like, right. How can you, and, and, and it's the same thing, kind of what we came up with, right? It's, it's sure. we were kind of, you know, had this, this, this beautiful picture of what we could do. And we accomplished a lot of it. And honestly, I think there were a lot of really big gains. But I think yeah. it's if you just take the gains without um, without continually improving, right? That's where sure. it's like saying like discussions boards, boards are great for X, Y, Z. So we're just going to use them for everything. Right. And it, it, right. it misses the point, right? So this is where online, it, you're trying to engage students. And I think that that that, that hand calculation piece of it also mm -hmm. brings back that human perspective. Somebody's actually mm -hmm. looking at this, right? Right. It, right. But it, it's it's not it's it's uh, the time sensitivity isn't as much as getting the right answer, right? So you want to know you're doing it right, right? So there's the, I think there's the the best of both yeah. worlds, and that's where that I mean I think Jeff and I both um, agreed at, at some point that that the 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 quote from Magalies in um, that, that this is literally the last sentence of their literature review, right? Yeah. The hybrid the hybrid approach was really. Um, is really beneficial. That, that so they, they looked at you know studies upon studies upon studies, and this was I think one of their 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 conclusions, right? And I, I think Jeff and I both resonated with that quite a bit. Yeah, it, I, I it seemed like both of you were able to kind of prove this consensus. So, yeah, awesome. Um, Tony had a, a great suggestion for you too, and I know that you had mentioned actually contacting Lumen to help you out with some things. But um, if you're sharing this feedback with Lumen just to help with future kind of platform improvements, would be awesome. Absolutely. That's, They've been uh, really receptive to, to feedback yeah, from our faculty. To... So, Great. Yeah, I'd be happy to um, continue conversations with them. I've been speaking with them. And, and Tony, I know we've had a couple conversations kind of offline as well. So I, I appreciate okay. the, the support from SUNY because honestly, Loom has been a great system for, for my, from my perspective. Um, yeah. You know, it's given me the flexibility to build things, whereas I think some of the publisher proprietary stuff is a little less able to customize. Mm -hmm. And so right. I've appreciated that very much, but yeah, I'd be happy to, to, to continue that conversation with them. Yeah. And, and their opportunity to learn from actual users <laughs> who are trying to kick the tires and make it do some other things. Well, especially expanding because, because Lumen, especially Lumen Ohm started based on math, right? Right. It, it, it all it expanded to chemistry. And I think there's, there's a, a great place for it to expand into engineering and yeah. um, engineering technology as well. So um, absolutely, yeah, that's a, that's great. So thank you for SUNY support of Lumen, by the way, because I, I know you guys uh, make this possible on a, on a bigger picture. But um, that's been that's been a, a good system for, for what I've wanted to do with it. Awesome. Terrific. Um, so I'm going to just pull up a closing slide for the purposes of our recording and so forth. Um, and of course, thank you. And to Jeff as, as well, as always.
we appreciate you being able to share what kinds of things you come up with. You're always doing something pretty neat and creative over there. So I appreciate that. Um, the full schedule of events for Distance Learning Week is at that first link. Um, and the recordings will also be posted there throughout the week, as well as on our YouTube channel. USDLA sponsors National Distance Learning Week and supports SUNY Online webinars on their website. So if anybody is interested in seeing what other kinds of activities are going around um, on around this week around the country, you can check that out there. Uh, we do have a session coming up here at one, so I'm gonna leave the Zoom room open. I'll just mute everything, but I'll leave it open if anyone wants to stay. And it is elevating design in your course, and this is actually part two, but if you did attend um, and miss or miss part one on Monday, um, I'll give you the link to that as well. Thanks again.